Hello everyone, welcome to the Guitar Gallery here at Anderton's. It's a little treat for me every time I come here to make videos. I get to come and look around in here and see what's new. And today I get to just pick some stuff to make a video on. So we're going to do that. We've come to the Martin end of the room. Over here, these two caught my eye. This is the CEO 9 and the CEO 7. Now I've not played these before at all. They're, um, I've just been given the, the kind of lowdown on them. They're designs that Chris Martin himself, uh, the CEO of Martin, kind of wanted to, wanted to make happen. And the CEO series, there's actually, there's been 10 of these, apparently, because there was an 8.2, uh, which was a kind of, almost like a super jumbo sh size shape. But yeah, we've got these two. This one has got an Adirondack spruce top with mahogany back and sides. This one is all mango wood, which I've never played a mango wood guitar. Um, so we're going to go and see what the, how they play. I'm sure they're going to play fantastically, but also I'm really interested to see what the sonic differences are between the t you know, all the different wood types. Um, and they both look cool and I get to play Martins, which is always a treat. So let's see how they sound. What a treat. Ah, oh, it's always nice when I get to come here and play really nice Martin guitars. Today is no exception. Now we just, uh, we, I told you a little bit about these when we were over in the shop. I started on this one because I was really curious because I've never played a guitar made of curly mango wood before. Uh, now I have, it's lovely. So <laughs> let's, uh, let's look at some of the specs on these. Martin described these two as well, but it's the same shape, so the construction on these is the same. The main difference is the woods, really. Uh, Martin described these as um, a slope-shouldered double O, 14 fret, because they both have got 14 fret neck joins. The similarities don't end there. It's a 24.9 inch scale length on both of them. They both have the, I think they call this the classic V profile neck. Very comfortable. One and three quarter inch nut width. They both have a mahogany neck. They've got these kind of golden age style open tuners, which are very cool. And uh, I've already flipped this over now, so I'm gonna carry on talking about it. The main difference is, as I mentioned, is really in the wood. This one is curly mango. Look at the back on that. Oh my God. I think this is a copper finish, they call it. I love it. I think this guitar looks fantastic. Um, the burst on the front is lovely. It's got these, I think, liquid metal bridge pins, they call it. Um, tortoiseshell scratch plate, this faux tortoiseshell front on the headstock as well. Um, it's a beautiful guitar. I'm going to play some more stuff on it, and then I'm going to move over to this one, and I'm going to try and do some kind of similar pieces so you can hear how the different woods affect the sound on some similar sounding bits. So. We'll start that now. I'm going to do something a bit more bluesy, I think, because this kind of guitar just screams that to me. Uh, and then I'm going to do the same thing on the CEO 7 here. Thank you. 
Oh, I mean, it's, a, yeah, it's a beautiful guitar. Be uh, it's such a treat, Martins. I love Martins. I love playing Martins. I'm going to do a similar thing right away on this guitar, and then I'll talk about it. So here we go. So this is the uh, this is the CEO seven. Now I believe a little bit of trivia for you. Uh, this is the guitar that was used in that film yesterday um, that came out a couple of years ago about the you know if the Beatles hadn't existed. Um, and I this one is a limited edition. This I believe has been made a part of the kind of permanent range of Martin guitars. Um, again, it's a it's a beautiful instrument. The wood is the main difference on here. In fact, it's pretty much the only difference on here. This has got an Adirondack spruce top and the classic um, mahogany back and sides. So it's very similar to a kind of an 18 series um, in terms of the construction. They've both got the same scalloped bracing, X bracing, same neck profile, same nut width, same scale length. So it really just comes down to the, to the wood type. Um, they both sound amazing. And as ever, it's always worth saying that with, you know, Martin themselves say that the more you play it, the better it's going to sound. So if these have got, once these have got a couple of years playing on them, they're just going to sound incredible. I'm going to try and do a, a quick compare and contrast between the two, just with some strumming and stuff, simple chords, so we can really hear how the tonal differences stack up against each other. But, you know... They're, they're, I mean, they're just so, they're just both so nice. But I'm gonna start with this one. Let's do some kind of cowboy chords, something in G. So there's some pronounced tonal differences between the two. This has got the kind of classic warm mid-range that I would expect from a mahogany bodied guitar, right? Um, it's lovely. I normally, you know, my main guitar is, is a mahogany uh, back and side guitar and I love it. Um, it's less kind of snappy, I would say, than this one or your traditional rosewood construction. But this one seems to have a more pronounced lower end. The high mids seem a bit more pronounced, Mango, I believe, is quite, a, you know, like physically a hard wood, fairly similar to Koa in terms of its like consistency. Um, but this has got, in a kind of more common reference point, this is much closer to a kind of rosewood feel, but it's got a bit more openness to it. I'm getting really vague now, aren't I? But I'm going to play a few more things. And then, uh, just because I really like playing both these guitars, let's do some kind of classic finger-picking folky stuff on both of them in the key of C. I'm going to start with this. I really like the clarity you get on this one for the, uh, the finger-pick stuff. I mean, I like it on both of them. Who am I trying to kid? Here we go. <laughs> Swap them out. Oh. 
I'm just going to have to take them both, I think. Um, and you can hear the differences for yourself. They're, they're pronounced. They both sound amazing. What's your favourite, Ben? My favourite? I don't know. I knew you were going to ask that. It's really hard to decide because each time I pick them up, um, I go, oh, this, is, this one's definitely my favourite. I'm really enjoying the, the mango one just because it's something a bit different. But I know that the mahogany one, it's just, it sounds classic. You know, they both sound classic. But I think just for kind of the differences, I really like the Mango one. So the Mango one is more expensive. So the, the CEO 9 is more expensive than the CEO 7. Check below for the current prices and everything because they are a bit subject to fluctuation. Um, but they're both wonderful guitars. If I had to choose one of them to walk out with today, I think it would have to be the Mango one. Um, just because it's something that I'm a little less used to and that kind of makes it sound nice. I could, um, I could make this video last about five hours probably, just playing these two guitars, but this is going to be the last bit of playing I'm doing in this one. Do remember to click like and subscribe. Go and have a look at these on the website. Um, as with all the stuff in the guitar gallery, the pictures you see on the website are the pictures of the actual guitars that you're going to buy. They're numbered and everything, so it's well worth remembering that when you're looking and checking out the grain patterns and stuff. Look at this. Look at it. The burst on here is amazing. And the, I hadn't even mentioned the binding around here. I, I don't know what it's called, but it looks, I mean, it just looks great. I love this guitar. I'm going to play some stuff on it. Let's see how it handles some drop.